people ask me about my place, uh, about where I live, uh, this is Dolomites. Uh, this is uh, the mountain uh, that I'm used to see since I was a child. Uh, and uh, I love uh, to come in the mountain and get the inspiration uh, to design my trees uh, because uh, especially now is uh, late spring, uh, the snow is melting uh, and sliding over the trunks uh, of the tree to create uh, that feature that we're looking for when we do bonsai, the stream environment that we want to try to repeat uh, in the aesthetic of our tree. So when I design a pine, I imagine the weight of the snow pushing against the branches, bending the branches down to create uh, the path, to create the shape of the trunk. Uh, and uh, every time I have the chance to come here in the mountain, I fill up myself with the energy of nature. It's incredible when I observe uh, these trees uh, in the rock uh, to see how small uh, is the space uh, where they can grow roots uh, and still survive. And it's something very similar for bonsai. We have our bonsai in a very small container with a very limited space, but still uh, with water and nutrients and air and sunlight, uh, we are able uh, to make this tree survive and live uh, and become beautiful pieces of art, natural pieces of art. Sitting here in the mountain uh, at the base uh, of this incredible uh, pine uh, that for centuries stand uh, over a rock uh, to preserve uh, his identity and his life uh, by anchoring the roots uh, to the rock uh, and fight uh, against the element. Uh, I want to try to really capture the essence uh, of this uh, uh, majestic tree. And then when I go home and I work on my trees uh, and then take care of my old pines, uh, I want to try to bring a little part of that essence uh, to my bonsai and uh, to the way I design my trees. And here we are back in the workshop after a good morning uh, running uh, in the mountain and uh, enjoying nature at its best. And now I'm here with this pine uh, that uh, is already completely wired. Uh, I did already some selection from very long and leggy branches. Uh, uh, the tree was a little bit uh, left over for some years uh, and now need a restyle. So I remove some branches. Uh, uh, I have a little bit to solve uh, the problem of the straight uh, and horizontal trunk. So I will change the angle slightly to highlight uh, the first movement uh, in this area. And then I will start to compress uh, the foliage around the trunk uh, to have a nice dynamism and a nice uh, rhythm. When we have a tree with a very straight uh, part of the trunk, uh, uh, it's always better to move uh, that section so from the point of view, it's not either horizontal or really vertical because it will be very high catching uh, in the overall design, uh, especially if we have other part with better movement. Uh, that's why I put this tree in an angle, highlight the base. Uh, now I'm uh, moving some branches uh, 
around this uh, central section of the trunk that now is uh, in a nicer inclination. I can uh, mitigate a little bit that uh, strength, that visual strength, uh, creating uh, rhythm and movement with pad, uh, and I can build up uh, a tree around that, but just a little bit hiding that uh, defect. We are halfway on uh, the restyling of this uh, piece. Uh, uh, when I go through the branches, always from the lower one up to the top and uh, around, uh, walking kind of in a, a spiraling uh, to the apex, uh, I remove uh, the very long and leggy branches, uh, trying already to move the energy of the tree in the more compact area that obviously uh, on a tree that was a little bit let grow for many years like this one, uh, we have uh, some very leggy branches. Uh, so in years uh, with the correct pinching uh, and good fertilization, we can get uh, the foliage uh, to back bud uh, pretty much. Uh, Scott Pine is very generous on that. Uh, so uh, at the moment, uh, I'm pushing down, trying to go out uh, with nice pad, uh, still have uh, enough foliage to create a pretty uh, decent uh, styling. Uh, and now I'm facing uh, uh, some of the problem in the top, especially this branch uh, that has to be bent down. Normally the trick to compact the tree is uh, always uh, to compress the structure and then uh, come out uh, with the small foliage. So the next step will be bending that branch and then trying to uh, compact the apex uh, uh, that uh, now, as you can see, is pretty much uh, uh, big, long and extended. with the final result I was able to compress as much as I can the tree to reshape it a little bit especially the structure on the apex I have to twig many of the leggy leggy branches to re-head some of a canopy look now obviously the next step as I said would be pinching the candle and get the tree to back bud so some of those uh, looping branches we can start uh, shortening in the future and get uh, uh, and uh, remove uh, those uh, uh, loops but uh, this is what we have to do when uh, we get to work on a tree that was a little bit neglected for years uh, and we have to restart again uh, with a nice shaping. The Dolomites are always a great source of inspiration. I hope you enjoy this video. See you at the next.